Howdy folks, my name is Terry, and I am so, so excited to be sharing this tutorial with you today. If you are new to this channel, welcome. If you have been here a while, welcome as well. I'm so thankful for your support. Now, today we are going to paint out of the Shades by our core set, the Liberators. These are Stormcast Eternals. And if you've been following me on the social media channels, like on Facebook and on Instagram, uh, you can see some of the progress I've been uh, putting up for photos and work in progress um, of these miniatures uh, over the last week or so because ultimately I really wanted to focus on creating a tutorial using the most basic techniques. This tutorial is meant for people who have never painted miniatures before. Um, if you've never held a brush before, you can absolutely paint these models to look like this. It's not hard at all and I've designed this tutorial for you. Before we get started, there's a couple things I really want to talk about first. You want a high quality miniature paint because they have a really high level of pigmentation with really low filler. So what that means is the paint will color but will not like obscure details. It won't be chunky, it won't be really thick in order to get that that coverage quality. I also want to mention that while I use these paints uh, for this tutorial, uh, you don't have to use a specific brand or a specific shade. These are your miniatures, so paint them whatever color you want. I'm going to talk about the colors in generic terms as I talk you through this tutorial. The actual specific names and brands of the paints are in the description below. Uh, and some of the paints I have are a uh, little older ranges. Some have been discontinued, but you can find comparables throughout just about all of the ranges. There's such a great range of color. Um, so any store that sells you Shades Bar will probably have a paint rack selling paints. And you could probably find comparable colors there. The second thing I want to talk about is brushes. Now I am a big believer that if you want to paint quickly, you paint with a big brush. You'll cover more model with a bigger brush, obviously. So my go-to dry brush is actually a very large brush. It's meant to be an eyeshadow brush. I buy it from a cosmetic site called Eyes, Lips, Face. It's available in like drugstores or the cosmetic aisle of like big box stores as well. Um, and it's the e.l.f. contour brush. It gives you a really beautiful finish to your models. So you can use this brush, but you can also use whatever dry brush you have on hand. Similarly, I also use a base coat style kind of sized brush for just about all the base coats on these miniatures. I also use it to apply the washes. Um, I'm using a Winsor Newton Series 7 size 1 brush, uh, which is a reasonably large brush. It's not like a super tiny fine brush. It does have a really good tip though, and that's the big thing when you get yourself a base coat brush, is you want to make sure it has a really nice pointed tip, and you can help that tip out by keeping your brush uh, moist as you paint with it. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get to the tutorial. Now, we're going to be painting these miniatures as a batch. Batch painting allows you to actually move on through the miniatures and get miniatures done faster. If you paint a single miniature one at a time, it actually takes you longer than if you painted them together as a group uh, and added all that time together. It's, it's actually a very efficient way to paint miniatures. Now we're going to start with black primed miniatures. I start with black because black is a really forgiving color for beginner painters. If you prime your miniature and you can buy primer where you're buying your box of Shades Buyer, uh, that primer um, will allow you to um, cheat a little bit. Where your brush can't reach, light's probably not going to reach on that miniature, so by using black primer you're actually creating shadows already on the miniature, which is really nice. The first color we're going to put on is this really rich purpley copper tone uh, that we're going to dry brush. Now dry brushing is when you load the paint onto your brush and you wipe most of the paint off onto a paper towel. We're not watering down the paint whatsoever. It's coming straight out of the pot and going onto the, into the brush and onto the paper towel as you remove most of the paint. We're thinking 90% plus of the paint. With this first layer, we're going to do a heavier dry brush. So I'm not going to take as much off of the brush as I will for subsequent layers. So I'm taking about 90% of the paint off the brush for this first coat, and we're going to cover them head to toe. I'm not going to be picky here. The big thing is you can put this paint everywhere and don't worry about trying to keep it contained. Don't worry about that. We're going to paint over the parts that aren't going to be metallic later on. The next 
color we're going to put on is this really like cop penny copper color. It's like a, the color of a brand new penny and it's, it's a brassy tone uh, and it brings in a little bit of warmth into this, this gold tone. I find that that little bit of red makes it look really pretty. So we're going to dry brush that on again putting it on the brush, taking most of it off on the paper towel, and then bringing that to the model. We'll do it again! We're doing four layers of metallic on this. We're halfway through. The next color we're going to use is this really orangey gold tone, and we're going to dry brush that on. Again, taking most of the paint off on the paper towel and putting it onto the miniature. You'll start seeing immediately it picking up on the higher points. The more you take off on the paper towel, the more this paint will only deposit on the highest points of the miniature. And as we go across the miniature, we bring that brush on pretty vigorously. That's fine. If you're taking most of the paint off, that vigorous brushing is actually going to help pick out those high points even better. If you're loading your paint up too much onto the brush, that vigorous brush will actually deposit too much paint on, so it's better to go lighter than it is to go too heavy with paint on the brush. And finally, the last layer of gold on here is going to be a really bright, yellowy, toned gold. It's going to be the highest points, it's going to pick up the highest points of the model, and it's going to shine. So we're going to add that on as the last highlight. Again, don't be afraid to take most of it off. Don't be afraid to reload. If you're thinking that it's not showing up, add a little more paint to your brush. Do it all over again. You can always layer on colors. It's really hard, however, to take paint off a miniature once it's been applied. So it's better to layer on over and on top of the uh, effect you've got. Now once all of those metallics are done, the dry brushing should not take you longer than like 15 minutes total for all three miniatures. We're going to apply a wash. Now I'm using a particular kind of wash that lets me see where the wash is going and, and gives me a really good idea of how it's going to dry. If you're using a wash that you just apply and trust and dry and it'll go on fine, and I know Citadel makes a line of, of washes that, that work beautifully like that, um, that you can trust. You can use those as well. Null oil is extremely popular along, among miniature painters, so go ahead and throw that on. I'm going to apply it onto the model pretty much where all of the armor is and, and let that dry. Now, you'll notice me saying let that dry. That is a really, really important part of miniature painting. You want to let your layers dry before you put another layer on. With dry brushing, it's a lot easier because you're basically applying the paint almost dry already, and as, as soon as it hits the model, you're you're ready to go with the next color, but with a wash, especially, especially in those cracks and recesses where it tends to pool and give you that nice dark shadow, you really want to be thoughtful of letting that dry before you even think about putting more paint on the miniature. Now we're going to do base coating. Base coating is basically taking paint out of the bottle. We're going to thin it to the consistency of something like coffee creamer. Um, if your paint is a little older, it might be a little bit thicker. It might look more like maybe uh, sour cream, or if you're like, you've got really old paint, it might look even like toothpaste a little bit. Thin that down. You want it to kind of puddle and pool on your palette. Um, if you are using a newer paint, it's crack, you're cracking it brand new, it might be a little bit thinner. You don't need to use as much water to thin it down. Now we're going to put this blue on basically the cloth of this miniature. I'm picking out all of their skirts and putting the blue all over that. I'm going to put it on the shoulder pads as well because that's where that makes me happy. But I want to emphasize to you that if this color isn't the one you want to use or you don't want to put the color where I'm telling you to put the color, that's fine too. They're your miniatures. You paint them however you want. Now I'm focusing on putting the color on the cloth, on the skirts, as well as on the shoulder pads. Um, I'm being more careful when I'm painting on the, the insignias, the hammers on the shoulder pads, and I, I'm leaving one of Steelheart's shoulders, which is the big lion shoulder pad. Just I'm leaving that gold because I think it looks really good that way, but it's totally up to you. It's your miniature, where, and where you want to put this color is absolutely up to you. Now with this base coat, you may have to do more than one coat to get the level of coverage you want on the miniature. That is absolutely okay. After the blue is painted on, I'm going to paint on some of the brown on these miniatures. These miniatures have some leather detailing uh, on them. Uh, if you pick out like the gladiatorial skirts that are, are embellishing uh, the model, their belts, obviously, there's some um, strapping for, for the weaponry uh, on the handles of the hammers, for example. I'm painting those with this really warm kind of mid-tone brown. Once the brown has been applied, I'm going to dry brush silver on the weapons. Now, if you were watching carefully, I put that dark coppery 
toned uh, purple metallic that I did for my first dry brush base coat on the weapons as well. I did that because I really wanted to um, put an undertone uh, to to help that silver build up on top of. When I do my metallics with the dry brushing techniques I use, um, I tend to do at least two layers to give that metal like some depth uh, in terms of its color. So because this already has that, that purpley copper tone underneath it, dry brushing some silver on top is gonna make that color pop even more. Now we're gonna base coat the ivory scroll. Again, you're gonna use that nice thin down paint and you're going to paint it on the scroll. Uh, you'll notice the scroll has some details already sculpted into them. It's a lot easier to get the paint into the details if it's got a little more water in it and then you can do multiple coats to get that paint where to the coverage level you want. If you paint this scroll with a really thick paint and you don't thin your paints down, this is the perfect example of losing the detail on the model because ultimately that paint will dry and it'll fill in those details and you won't be able to see them. Now we're going to take the wash we used on the armor and we're going to wash down all the things we painted. We're going to wash down that brown leather. We're going to wash down the silver metallic on the weaponry. We're going to wash down any of the scroll work. Again, if you need to do a second coat because you don't like that the wash didn't dry as dark as you thought, go ahead. Selectively apply the wash where you want it to be a little bit darker after it's dried that first coat and you can see how it looks. Now while those washes are drying, I'm going to work on parts of the miniature I haven't painted yet. I'm going to throw on some red onto the miniature to make the little details on this miniature pop even more. Now the red I'm applying is going to go on Steelheart's helmet as well as the detail uh, of the inlay on the front of the skirts of all of the Liberators. Um, you can paint this whatever color you want. You don't have to follow the way I've painted them, but ultimately I find that painting these little details helps make the model stand out. And while that's drying, I'm going to actually apply paint to Steelheart's head, which doesn't have a helmet on it. So with Steelheart, there's a flesh tone and then his hair. And in my heart, he's got this beautiful golden locks, flaxen gold hair. And so I'm going to take a flesh tone and I'm going to paint it over his head. I'm actually going to extend the line a little bit past where his face ends and into the hairline. The reason why I'm doing that is when I paint the flesh tone up through his head, it's easier to paint the hair down to match where the line ends than it is for me to bring a flesh tone up to that line and then bring the hairline right to it. You almost always either end up over painting and then having to correct that mistake in the first place, or you'll have to end up living with this line of like undercoated primer where the two colors would meet. So if you overpaint and overextend the boundary a little bit, you'll find that it's a lot easier to paint the hair on top than it is if you try to match the lines. Now this is something we've already intuitively done by extending our paint colors for the metallic armor across basically most of the model. We're not going to be too worrisome about like how far we're extending that across because when we paint the details on top of it, it matches those lines perfectly. So now that all of those coats are dry, we're going to do one final wash on the red that we painted on, as well as the face and the hair, um, and whatever other details you want to kind of bring you know, more shade to. You want to tone it down a little bit, feel free to add the wash on now because you can kind of see how the model has fi finally been completed. Now. When it comes to bases, it's really easy to just get these done. Bases are some of the fastest things to paint, especially when they're already sculpted like this. Um, I basically just put down a coat of gray on the base and I then dry brushed a lighter gray on top. So you'll notice because I painted the bases with the models not on top of them that I didn't glue them down. So there's three hints I want to talk to you about and the first one is that don't glue your models down to the bases with these push fit miniatures it's actually really nice to be able to take stuff apart if you need to to, to reach your brush into places you wouldn't normally be able to reach it into and it's a lot easier to paint a, a base and dry brush it when the miniature isn't on it so I uh, I did all my messy dry brushing paint got everywhere including the base but I covered that up with the base's final paint job. Um, the other thing I want to mention is if you don't fully glue these miniatures together as you paint them, you can actually take the parts off of them that are making it hard for you to paint and paint them separately. So with Oberyn, I left his arms off so I could reach up behind the hammer and and paint up his, his uh, belt and those details on the front of him. That's really easy to do if you don't glue your models together. The second tip I want to talk to you about is 
turning your model upside down while you paint him. The fact of the matter is that we each have a dominant hand when it comes to painting, and sometimes painting on the other side of a miniature with that hand can get really cumbersome. But if you turn the model upside down, it's easy to reach those parts of the model with that hand. And it also lets you reach into places that you wouldn't normally be able to reach. So don't hesitate to flip your model and hold it in weird ways to, to get the model done. Just because it stands like this doesn't mean it's stuck like this in your hand. The last tip I want to talk to you about is don't paint what you cannot see. Now I'm going to show you Steelheart here. If you look really closely underneath this model, there is like the blue plastic obviously, and the backs of his legs are not dry brushed whatsoever. They're not going to see the back of his legs because of his big skirt. So you don't have to paint them if you cannot see them. Instead, focus on the details that everyone can see. Spend your effort and your time there because that's what people are going to notice and that's what you can actually show off when you bring your models to play with them with pride and love because you've got them done. Now that's my tutorial. It was really not that hard. All we did was base coats, dry brushes, and washes. You don't need to be magically and and artistically talented to do that. If you're looking to get another kind of level up video, I'm going to be working on a, a second video to this where you, we're going to pick out some more details on these miniatures. Specifically, we're going to do layered highlights where we're going to you know, bring out the cloth of the base coat of that, that blue skirt and make it pop a little bit more with some beautiful highlights. We're also going to paint Steelheart's eyes, which I know a lot of people have a lot of difficulty doing, but I've got a technique that you can do that makes eyes a lot easier and a lot not not as scary at least. Now I'm going to be doing more tutorials from the Shadespire set as well as a bunch of other tutorials in general. Uh, I've got some really interesting ideas about how to make shattered glass because Shadespire is a city of glass for an additional basing material for these miniatures. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit that, that like and subscribe button. And if you want to support videos like this, go ahead on to my Patreon page and support me there. Don't forget to share this video with your friends if you want them to get painted with you as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll be definitely checking that out and answering them. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, I will see you soon.